What up, guys? It's Makoa Gobel here with Low Kick MMA, and I'm joined by the one and only, the body snatcher, Dwight Grant. Dwight, how you doing today, my man? I'm doing pretty good, man. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing awesome, dude. We got a big pay-per-view tonight. I'm super excited. You planning on watching that thing? Uh, definitely. The, I mean, the, the main event, the co-main event alone is going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Did you see this kind of just broke today, but I guess Drake is putting a million dollars on Izzy to win. What, oh, what's snap. like your reaction to that? I didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I mean, I feel like it's kind of a safe bet because, uh, you know, like Izzy has been the reigning defending champion for so long. So it's not like it's any out of the ordinary. You know, so I mean, and, and it, honestly, honestly, I think for, for Izzy, it's a good matchup for him, you know. So yeah. unless uh, Kennedy does something really different, like he goes for ankle picks and like, <laughs> and like just yeah. grabbing his legs the whole time, Izzy can fight on the ground too. So he has the skills to do it, you know. Yeah. But it just that his path to victory uh, would be more grappling related to get him tired. Like we always try to do, like people always try to do to me too, like to, to grab to grapplers to strikers, uh, and then take them out that way. That's a lot more work than just punching somebody in the face. So is he is he got the advantage here? Yeah. Yeah. And do you think Cannoneer, uh having been one of those guys who was at heavyweight and dropped down to light heavyweight, and now here he is at middleweight? Do you think that's going to help them, like in the strength department at all? Or now that they're on the same level, so to speak, do you think it it should be pretty even as far as that goes? It should be pretty even. Uh, I think him coming down from a heavier weight means that he he may have a little bit more uh, sense of his body in, sen- in a term of like being in critical condition of tired, you know, because yeah. when you're like when you're big and you're trying, you're going hard, it's much different than being small and doing the same thing. But if he went up to 205 and he didn't, he didn't have the success there, but he's fighting the champion, you know, but right. he knows what it's like uh, having more energy. But I think when you're a big guy going down to a smaller thing, it's not just about energy; it's about size, you know, and how you can drain your opponent. I don't know what I don't know how what weight um Canada gets up to after he uh, weighs in. Um, if he's really heavy and strong, he, he can get a hold of Izzy. He can drain some of that energy and slow him down and make it more competitive. But I'd imagine, like the fight with, with, with uh, Paul Acosta, uh, is going to be cutting corners, leaving all kinds of jabs in the way, crosses in the way, knees. You know, all kinds of things to keep him at bay. It's gonna be really hard for him to, to get in. That's why I think this fight is like so much fun. For I like both of them, by the way. You know, what I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm a bigger fan of Izzy, obviously, but like I just want to see how Izzy uh, uh, handles this particular problem. You know, and and th- and this skill set that Canadair brings. Canadair brings a skill set. You know, and I'm, I'm excited to see it. You know? Oh yeah, it is, man. And uh, for a co-main, we've got the trilogy fight between Volkanovski and Holloway. Well, what are your thoughts on that, man? I mean, what happens if, if Max Holloway wins tonight? I mean, are these guys going to fight like a fourth and fifth time? I mean. Hey, let, let them do it. I, I want Max to win. All right. Like, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's crazy. As much as I love the fact that, like, uh, you know, Izzy and uh, Volkanovski, like, you know, like they, everybody trains at the gym and, like, you know, it's having that success. Man, I'm a huge Max Holloway fan. Like, I, I want this guy to win. Uh, I feel like, you know, he has the ability to do it. And he sh- he should you know um Volkanovski does again bring his own skill set and bring his own things but I don't think he has anything that Max can't handle and that's the weird thing about it to me about this matchup is Volkanovski doesn't have anything that Max can't handle it's just that he's been able to keep up with him and because Max is usually so dominant you know when we see somebody keeping up with him it's like oh wow he's doing pretty good oh man he's doing, you know and it's true he is doing really good against probably with the the one of the well, probably one of the best fighters, but the best at that uh, weight class ever, you know. So we give him a lot of credit, and he deserves it. But I do think that he will and should be able to get the win tonight. Yeah, and do you, what do you think is next? Let's say if Volkanovski just so happens to beat Holloway again, like, is there anything left for this guy in the featherweight division, or is it at that point like might as well just move up? I mean, maybe even face. Oliveira. I mean, I couldn't imagine uh, Volkanovski going lower at all. I mean, he used to be a lot bigger of a guy before he was in the featherweight division. <laughs> uh, well, the thing for, with Max, I think I may have heard of him, him thinking about going up or something like that. It's 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 based on your frame and like what you can handle with all the change in weight classes over that. Um, it's hard. This there's, there's plenty of guys in the UFC history 
where you know they would have been champion had this other guy not been champion. You know what I mean? You look at uh, Gustafsson and and and, uh, and John Jones. You know, right. uh, even 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 well, John Jones and, and, and Daniel Cormier too. Like you know, exactly. Like, I was uh, thinking that a situation where this guy is just so good, but this guy is so good too. But he just can't be this one guy. You know, uh, I felt that way with uh, with Aldo and Holloway. You know, I, I'm an Aldo fan from way back in the day, and I was so surprised that he he, he didn't uh, beat Holloway the first time. And that's why I gained so much respect for Max. I'm like, this guy is really doing his thing against this guy. You know, so I think that if he doesn't win, you know, some somehow, uh, he might change weight classes because otherwise he's going to be hovering around the belt. You know, because you can't put him against anybody else. He's going to destroy them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like it's it just, it just what it is, you know? So everybody around the belt is going to get beat. It's kind of like what's happening in the middle of the division with, um, with, uh, with Whitaker. Whitaker, if not for, uh, for Izzy, Whitaker will be champion for sure. You know exactly. I mean? And as long as he's there, he's going to keep beating everybody around the championship and end up fighting for the belt again. So uh, yeah. uh, Max will have to change uh, change weight class or something. Exactly, man. And it's it's almost like Figueredo and, and Moreno, too, like that situation <laughs> they had. You know, it's like these guys yeah. are literally so evenly matched. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Um, another fight that's just super good on that card is – Sean Strickland versus Alex Pereira. What are your oh, thoughts on that matchup? I mean, that's going to be a banger. Do you think that's going to be a stand-up war? Do you think Sean Strickland might be looking to take a guy with the kickboxing pedigree like Pereira down in that mm. fight? I, I trained with Sean before, and and as far as I know, he's not going to shy away from the striking. Uh, I, I'm I'm almost a hundred percent sure he's going to test those waters. Can he take him down? Yeah, I'm sure he can. Will he? Only if he absolutely has to. I, I think. I think if uh, you know, gets him with a shot that he that he I don't want to say can't handle that like it's like giving him trouble. Then he'll go for the takedown in that moment, or maybe because he's such a veteran a little before. But I don't think he's gonna come out and just go for an ankle pick right away and try to like you know uh take him down off the bat. It's gonna be a stand up war. Uh, the problem for Sean in this situation is that. You know, this guy is going to be waiting to time him and get him, get him with certain shots. What Prayer might find is that if he does connect with Strickland, you know, it's going to hurt him. You know, he's going to get hit, but it's not going to slow him down the way normal people get slowed down when they get hit. You know what I mean? It's going to like, it's almost like you're hitting the bag. Like, you know, like you're, you're, you're tiring yourself out as you're striking. This guy is just getting stronger. So he's going to need more than just a, a clean shot. He's going to have to be able to dominate and avoid his hands and control range and fight the 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 uh the back and forth all, all the verbal yeah you know, like 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 things to be able to effectively go against them it's more than just 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 hands and feet there's a lot of mental stuff involved in a fight like this with somebody right. who can bridge the gap he, he might not have the same kickboxing pedigree but he can he can bait you into a punch just just as well you know so he, it's gonna be a great fight Right. And th that is an that is an amazing breakdown, man. And describe training with Sean Strickland. He's a guy that's known to be pretty, um, you know, he, he says kind of whatever's on his mind. I mean, how, how is it uh, being around him in real life and getting some time in training with him? Well, the thing about this, I, I, I didn't even know that he uh, I, I didn't know that he, that he was like a, a, a high level guy in the UFC before I trained with him. Uh, he, he, I met up with this dude. And we were gonna spar, and he was like, "Yeah, uh, just so you know, uh, we're gonna give each other brain damage today." And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "I was like, okay, <laughs> this sounds like fun." He was like, "You cool with that?" I'm like, "Yeah, man, let's go. Like, we're, we're gonna we're gonna have fun." I like sparring. You know what I mean? Like, if you tell me ahead of time we're gonna spar hard, I'm fine with everything. I don't like when people are like, "Hey, man, let's go light," and then all of a sudden, like, the fight is crazy. It's like, "Hey, man, like, what are you doing?" So the fact that he just met me. Didn't know him and was off the bat like, hey, uh, this is gonna be crazy, just so you know. It was perfect. We had a great spar session, you know, and I thought I thought it was very you know help, helpful for me for sure. You know, and it was cool. I, I would definitely train him again, you know. So it was nice. really good. I don't, I don't think uh a lot of the other stuff that, that people get into with him is just based on uh, you know, it's just how you how people re react to him, or they probably think about stuff ahead of time and then base that that prejudgment you know on how he's going to be i didn't have any because i didn't know who he was at the time you know so to me it was just like this guy is straight up and honest to me so we're going to have a good good training nice nice and i see from your instagram that you're a big fan of video games and sci-fi slash fantasy movies 
I've got a little bit of a different question for you here. If one of those two things was taken away forever and you could only stick with one, are you going with video games or movies here? Man, that's that's a tough question because uh, I feel like, you know, it's like the two kind of feed off of each other in a way. I really, really, really like RPGs, but it's because my favorite movie of all time is Legend 1985 with Tim Curry and Tom, uh, Tom Cruise and me and Sarah. Which is like Legend of Zelda, the movie. You know? Nice. So that, that would be pretty hard. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to go with video games. Uh, I, I'm going to need to keep that one. Only because uh, of the interactive media. And I feel like you're still getting the movie from a video game because you, know, you have some games that are so uh, heavily you know, uh, dressed in, in FMVs so that you're kind of like you're watching the movie anyway. Like a, like a game, like a, not even RPG, like Metal Gear Solid uh, 5. Or, uh, you know, even uh, Final Fantasy remake you just had. And some of the other games, uh, Tales of Symphonia, uh, Tales of Arise, like these kind of games like Persona 5. You're playing the game and you're getting this experience that is like you're reading, you're watching a movie, and you're like working all your puzzle skills and all of that. So that's something that I can't live without, man. So I'm going to have to say, yeah, keep getting around. <laughs> nice, nice. Do you ever watch anime as well? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> nice. What are some of your favorite animes, man? Uh, my favorite anime of all time is Neon Genesis Evangelion. I feel like I, I could reach over. I mean, this, this is the uh, this, this is just the book. This, this happens to be it's right backwards, but this, this is just the the, the manga that came out there. But the, the game, the story itself. Let me reach over one more time. But this right here, so the package. This right here, this is uh, one of the best animes ever. Nice. People look at it and they go, "Oh, we're just a bunch of kids in giant robots, you know, uh, having all kinds of existential crises." Yes, but at the, same, at the same time, like the story is interconnected and the kind of development is so great that it came out so many years ago. But to this day, if you Google or, or, or like uh, go on YouTube and write like Neon Genesis Evangelion uh, analysis, or you'll find so many different fan theories, stories in between things that make these characters great. And they represent like I started watching the movie, uh, the, the, the anime, uh, when I was 14, and the main character is 14 also. You know, so for no. now going, to, going into high school, like it was a whole bunch of things where it was like, I'm watching this happen and I'm seeing these like, you know, like uh, almost uh, realities merging, you know, because yeah, you, you're in a new place, you're trying to make friends, you don't understand how things, you know. And if this wasn't a, a TV show, uh, anime, but it was just like a movie, everybody would love it and feel the same kind of way. But because it's an anime, sometimes people be like, oh, we're just cartoons. And you know that's not the truth. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah. Like, like I, I show, like, imagine on um, me, uh, this is us. This is us is a great uh, drama. If you animate it and, and put it, you know, in Japanese, it's an anime. It, and it's, right. not, it's not a unique anime. It is an anime. Yeah. Like so many other ones that are super over the top and, like, you know, have all these twists and turns. So, yeah, man, I, that, that's one of my yeah. favorites. Uh, it's my, my number one favorite. And also, you know, uh, Berserk uh, is, is one of my favorites also. Um, let me see. Uh, well, Dragon Ball Z and Naruto are, are so big that it's right. hard for me to even like say they're my favorites at this point. It, 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 almost with Fullmetal Alchemist, but some, but some of the ones that uh, that just to me hit really hard. Uh, D. Grayman, uh, Claymore, um, Gundam. Oh my gosh, Macross, yeah. Macross plus that whole thing. I mean, again, more giant robots. But the thing about Gundam, <laughs> the thing about Gundam, uh, and, and these giant robot shows is not just about the robots. It's about the pilots and their lives and how they deal with these things. I remember watching Gundam when I was a kid. And this is, this, I, mean, I was in school reading stuff about war and all that stuff like that. But there's a scene in one of the Gundam uh, anime. Like, I, I remember which one at this point. At this point, But like, there was a guy who wasn't even like a serious character. He's just some guy in, in one of the, the giant robots. And the main character is plowing through everybody. And then they just show this guy go, oh my God. And he starts screaming about his kids and he just blows up. And I was like, oh, at like, at like, you know what I mean? At like 10, 11 years old, I was like, man, war is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. At that point, you know what I mean? I was, I was in like a, like fifth or sixth grade or something like that. I had read about war and, you know, like, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff that happened in history. But for some reason, like for the rest of the day, I kept thinking about that guy, like, dang, dude. Like he, yeah. he destroyed hundreds of people in that one scene. And they all had their own stories, and they all had their own families, and this and that. And that. This this guy, he's the main character, but this guy is the worst. You know the perspective. Yeah. 
anime. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, I went off a little bit. <laughs> oh, you're okay. You're okay, man. I love it. So uh, that all brought up a question for me that I've just thought of. And this might also be a hard question, but you mentioned that these animes have such deep and moving storylines. And I've been a fan of a few myself, more of the mainstream ones like Dragon Ball Z and Naruto. But you brought up a great point of like, they would be bigger if they were like a regular movie, you know? And that makes me wonder if you had to pick one of the animes that you really love and have them uh, make that into a live action movie or maybe a series or something, Mm -hmm. which one stands out to you that you think the people would love the most or which one would you just love to see that, that happen to? All right. Now, now I'm about to go in a little bit right here. So (laughs) even though Neon Genesis is my favorite, show of all time this opening song that the, the voice actors everything you know it has to be berserk and i'm gonna tell you why uh with the with the success of what we had with uh with game of thrones another thing i love you know uh, game of thrones with, with the success of that um i can see that it will be easier for people to follow that kind of story and require a little bit less uh uh suspension of disbelief in that way right you have this medieval story of this guy going from uh, being unknown, having a crazy history and past, and then fighting his way into becoming like a, a well-known person. And then what I like about Berserk, I mean, Berserk is it's like so deep, you know? So it's hard for me to, to, to talk about everything that happens, but I think everybody can relate to trying really hard and getting what you want and then being there and being like, whoa, people are crazy around here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like I, I wanted to be here my entire life and now that I'm here, I'm seeing all these weird politics and I, and I have this ideal of purity and like, as long as I just believe in myself and I do what I want, I'll be here and it'll be easy. But then when you get you get there, all of a sudden there's all this extra stuff attached to it that you maybe didn't think that was there or didn't sign up, sign up for. And then you have this guy who's supposed to be leading you along the way you know, but then you realize, you know, where you stand with him and you're standing with the world. I'm trying to talk without giving any spoilers. Right now, yeah, you know? dude, you're doing a great job. Yeah. You really but are. I, I think that alone would be reason enough to make a good berserk show. And I'm not talking about uh, like just an adaptation, like how we've had, uh, I'm thinking about, about like, you know, we had um. A bunch of shows where I take anime and turn into live action. I'm not talking about live yeah. action. There was I'm like um, live... Avatar was one. Yeah. Avatar, yeah, they did that in the the, the Airbender. They did that yeah, into it, but that was a bad. It was a really bad live action movie though, compared yeah, to yeah. how good the anime series was. Yeah, because yeah, they, it's hard to take a show that has like 30, 40 hours, you know, and then condense it into a two-hour movie. You're gonna skip a lot of character and plot development. But people need to remember when they, I mean I'm not obviously not directing like that, but I like reading stories. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like what what makes a story good one is a great villain, right? That makes you want to see him get his uh just dessert. Good good example, uh Joffrey in Game of Thrones, right? Everybody wanted to see something bad happen to Joffrey, you know? And it and it kind of united the audience. And also you need character development. I need to care about these characters. But well, Game of Thrones did so well. I keep going back to that show, I mean, but there's so many other ones, but off the top of my head, uh, is they made you care about the characters so much, even minor characters, that if anything happened to this character, it ruins your day. <laughs> like, it ruins your day. You can't really do that in a two-hour movie, you know, you're going to skip ac- across certain things that, you know, it may seem like, okay, well, most people will care about this. Yeah, but the closer you get to relating to a character and seeing all the different nuances and then basically having character development, the more you're going to care about that character throughout the story. And I think Berserk is one of the anime uh, where you can build that, well, not just with Guts, but with the cast of characters, Casca, everybody involved, even Griffith and everybody, like you can find something in there for everyone. And they made that into a show, like how they did with The Witcher, you know? Yeah. Where, like, they, they built the character up. What, oh, this episode isn't as exciting. It doesn't need to be. They need to make you care about this character and give you the backstory in the proper order. We, uh, a show that they did, they're kind of, it wasn't terrible, but a lot of people didn't like it. Um, oh, sorry, not, not, I was about to say the name of the show. <laughs> not, but, um, uh, you know, uh, Space Cowboy, what, what, what's this one um, that just came out on Netflix? Um, and I can't believe I can't remember the name. Let me see if I have it written down here somewhere. The, the, the name of the show. But they did a show recently. It's probably better I don't say the name of the show. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, the, the main character had, okay, now I remember what it is. Uh, the, the, the main character, he had a secret 
past that made him lovable and almost bumbling. He seemed like a fool in the anime, but then you find out this guy is like some crazy assassin from everywhere in the past, and you're like, what the, this guy? That's crazy. That's impossible. Like, why would this guy? And then you care about him so much more because you've already connected with him as like some kind of guy who doesn't have things all together. And then find out the reason he's like that is because he has such a terrible past. He had to become that person just to exist in a normal world, you know? Like he he almost can't even exist in this world because he doesn't know what it's like to have regular life or regular friends. He's not gonna have the same responses to questions and be intelligent about uh communication the way a person was who didn't spend their entire life killing people. I don't know, man. I mean, it, 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 it's an extreme example, but you know, like you have to develop the character. They kind of told you everything in the very beginning, so you never really had a chance to connect with that character. So yeah. back to the question, going in, sorry. Uh, no, you're okay. Berserk, but Berserk uh, will be the one that I feel could be a great show that can go on for so long. Also, I got to mention one of my favorite animes too, One Piece. Love it. I was I wondering, I was going to ask you about that <laughs> if you ever watched it, because you listed so many, but you didn't say that one. Yeah, well, One Piece, well, one piece uh, is my favorite anime that has a... Uh, uh, an episode like it has episodes that continue continue more more than one season because for me the yeah, Genesis only had like one season my almost my entire life you know uh, and I only watched the first fourteen episodes until I was an adult I, I had a, a VHS tape had the first fourteen episodes and I got to high school and I would watch it every single day on repeat not even knowing that it continued past fourteen and then when I did find when I, man if you talk about a shock like the thing <laughs> because the ending of it is bananas so I started seeing a whole bunch of stuff when I was older you know. But and Berserk again only had one season, you know, like uh, for most of my life, and they started expanding on. I didn't have access to the manga uh, for, for a long time. But um, with One Piece, I watched episodes one to a hundred, you know, hundred to two hundred like that for many many years, and that was a great show. That's my favorite anime that has more than one season. I mean, to this day, you know. <laughs> so I gotta mention that real quick. But oh yeah, Berserk, okay, yeah. <laughs> so let's get back on to the MMA. You got an upcoming fight, UFC on ABC3. That's a giant card. It's July 16th. Um, mm. You're facing Dustin Stolzfist. I mm. probably butchered that pronunciation, but what are, what are, your, um, what are your thoughts on him as an opponent? Uh, he, he seems like a well rounded guy. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't like to, man, it's, it's so weird. I've been fighting, you know, and, 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 observing you know opponents for a long time and when, when i started fighting like there were you couldn't really look up your opponents that well you had to kind of just like meet the guy at the event and then go to your locker room sometimes you share the same locker room you know and come up with a game plan on the spot <laughs> you know so for me when i see people i make a snap judgment and then i run with it so my judgment on him is that he's going to try to stand with me for like 30 40 seconds and then try to take me down for the rest of the fight you know like that's what he's going to do uh it's fine. You know, that that's the game plan that everybody does. And they always say, oh, he's going to gas out or he's going to this, he's going to that. His coaches will say things to him to make him feel whatever. And I don't take any of it personally. I mean, it's a fight. We're trying to like get, get the win here, you know. But I don't see uh, him doing those things against me uh, that he's done to other people or done with other people. I think it's a very unique matchup in that I'm from the New, I'm from New York. You know, I, I fought people from that area. I fought all over the world. And I'm going to tell you something that is kind of going to sound kind of crazy. But people from different parts of the world, <laughs> they have similar styles. Like if you go to, if you go to like, a, at least to me, if I, when, when I'm fighting in Europe, depends on where the person is from. If somebody's from, for example, if you're fighting a Thai boxer, right, it's one thing. If you're fighting a guy who does Thai boxing, but is from Sweden, you know what you have, it, you know what I mean? Even though it's the same style. Yeah. It's, it's, there's going to yeah. be some things that are just there. If you find a guy who's a boxer, an American boxer versus a European boxer, yeah, like everybody has, you know, their own unique things, but there's some things you can count on, you know? Right. So guys from from uh, from the New York area, from Pennsylvania, from the East Coast, like I know I know their style because that's how I came up. I came up fighting them in kickboxing. I came up fighting them in, in MMA outside of New York, you know what I mean? Like uh, in their hometown, I've been to Pennsylvania, I've been, you know, different parts of, of you know, of Philadelphia and these things like that, Philadelphia more specifically, you know, and I've fought there and seen how the crowd is, how people treat the, the out of town guy, all these things that, that are important uh, for fighting somebody, you know, uh, and being comfortable around, around them and, and there. So I think 
he's going to have a, a, a unique matchup to me that he's never faced before. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm going to have one that I've seen a couple times. You know? Yeah. So uh, are you doing anything different for this fight camp in preparation for him? Or is it kind of just like business as usual for you? No, uh, this fight is actually... You know, people say, like, oh, every fight is the same. You know, you got to go out there and do your job. Yeah, I understand that, you know, but but I do place importance on things. You know, um, as we get closer to the fight, I'm fighting in New York. My fam- I'm from New York. I have family and friends coming. People who have never seen me fight in person before are going to find a chance to see me fight. because It wasn't legal to fight in New York, uh, MMA, when I left New York. You know, I came to California because it, it was it was legal here. You know, and you, you can get fights. Uh with that being said, I, I also moving up a weight class, so things are very different for me. You know, like uh, when I when I first uh, went to 170, like man, it was so much work getting to 170. It was like it was a lot of work. And I walk around like uh, at the time when I went down, I walk around like 205. You know, um, at at after 2020, I was walking around like 215, 216, and I had to get down to 170. And I would make it, but every single time. The fight was not the fight. The fight was making it to 170. And and when this last fight, I said to my coach, and there was this weird pause where we looked at each other like, that was a dumb thing to say. You know, but I was like, all right, the hard part's over. You know what I mean? And I started drinking water. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I made weight. The hard part's over. And then he looked at me like, you got to fight still. And I'm like, yeah, but you know what I mean? But like, that's, that's like a 15-minute thing. I'm going to try to make weight for like a month. <laughs> 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 and that's... That's a big thing that people say is like weight cutting is the fight before the fight. You know, it's like you have a battle with the scales before you can battle inside the cage. How is that going this time around? Are you are you I mean, I don't want to ask, like, what do you weigh right now? But how is it going? You know, like it's going great because uh, I'm okay. This is this is a weird level of panic every time I step onto the scale because I know I'm fighting in a few weeks and I like in my brain. I've been fighting 170, I think, since like 20, I remember like 14, 13, something like that. And I know I should be like 190, 185, 182. You know what I mean? Like uh, right now, you know? Um, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm close to 200 right now. <laughs> like, I, I don't mind saying my weight. It's good. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel great. Uh, but I only have to lose like maybe like 12 pounds, something like that, to make weight. I'm eating. I'm full of energy. I'm full of water. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I, I, I'm actually training more, and I've I've adjusted my schedule. You told actually uh, how have I changed things for this fight? Uh, so here, here's like a weird thing. So I changed weight classes. So now I'm heavier. I drink more water. I'm working out more. Uh, and because I'm working out more, uh, I have more energy, right? And I, I'm eating more. So I eat more. I have more energy. I'm working out. I'm getting hungrier. I'm eating more. I have more energy. So now it's like. I'm waking up earlier in the day to get more workouts in before the end of the day because I can. Usually at this time, I'm toning things down. Like, oh, man, I'm almost there. You know, I got to make it. Uh, let me get some water, you know? But now I'm just like, hey. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, let's fight. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm sparring hard, and then I'm going to strength conditioning, and then I'm going to grappling, and I'm coming home, I'm riding the bike, and I'm like, you know? And I'm not overtraining because I don't feel tore up the next day. Next day, I'm like, oh, I'm fine. I got enough sleep. Things feel good. And that's something that I forgot that I used to get at 185. At 185, I've, I've even though people are like, oh, man, he's getting tired. I've never been like, oh, man, I'm I'm tired right now. It's always been, oh, okay, like, I'm doing a lot. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. I, feel, I feel the speed I'm moving at. Uh, let's just keep doing this or let's keep doing that. And before also, I was, I was for some reason, well, not for some reason, I never did a strength conditioning as a professional. You know, so I was a lot smaller. I, I would weigh in 185 and go up to 190, you know, because I was I was coming down from like 193. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I, I'm, I'm, you know, I go up to, to like I said before, like 216, whatever it is. But for some reason in this camp where I'm fighting a heavier weight class, I've only been about 200 pounds the whole, this whole time. And sometimes 205, 206 and then back down. Because and as one of my coaches said, like probably because you know you're not gonna have to have this huge deficit. You're not eating as much as I usually. I usually eat like crazy. You know? Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but but now it's the eating is because oh you just worked out for two and a half hours. You need to eat. Oh you did another two and a half hour workout. You need to eat. Okay, you worked out for an hour. Okay, get a snack. Yo, know, you just press a run. You probably should get a snack. And that's right. how it's going. 
as opposed to me being like, I need to eat as much as I possibly can because in a week or two, I'm not going to be able to eat a full meal again. So that's been the biggest difference. And that's what I'm excited to show people, man. Like uh, uh, all these tricks and turns and stuff that I have in my head, these new techniques, in the middle of the fight, like I always have to push so hard to get to that point. To, okay, now I'm going to do this. You know, it's so much mental work because I'm kind of gathering my strength. Now I'm going to have a different start. So it's going to be pretty exciting. <laughs> nice, pretty nice. Man, and, and I wish we could uh, go on and on and talk all day, but time is <laughs> running out. I'm on the the free Zoom, so we've got a limit. <laughs> oh, my yeah, but uh, my last question for you is, um, you, you know, you're such a likable guy and you have such a big love for video games and everything. Are we ever going to see the Dwight Grant Twitch or? Oh, <laughs> oh I, I have a Twitch. Uh, it's, it's Punches and Dragons. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I'm on there, but the thing about it is I used to be on all the time. But what, what happened, I think when I fought in Prague in 2019, I was like, I came back and I was like, man, like I got to, I'm training so much that my old schedule was like, okay, I, I train during the day and I play video games from like 12 o'clock to like three in the morning, you know? And yeah. I, I start, I start training again at 12, but now I wake up at four in the morning and start training, you know, cause I, my, my son is, uh, he, he's six now and I want to try to do everything before he wakes up or right around the time he wakes up, be done. So I can hang out with him all day, you know? Yeah. So now I'm going to bed earlier and I'm hanging out with him. So. I'm on there. You know, if people will find me on Twitch, they're going to go on um, Punches and Dragons on Instagram. And also Dwight Grant on uh, Dwight Grant MMA on Instagram and see what I'm doing video game-wise until I get back in there. Because I'm always talking about video games regularly because that's the only thing I actually feel confident talking about. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I, I know about this. You know, so they can always catch me on there. Nice, nice. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say before we get off of here, my man? Any shout-outs or anything like that? Uh, I got uh, a big shout out to everybody at Azteca over here, uh, Chula Vista, uh, you know, Angel Melendrez, uh, Phil Davis helped me out a lot for this camp. You know, I'm fighting the guy from from, from, uh, from Pennsylvania too. Uh, you know, and, and this guy, Phil is an amazing wrestler and striker. So I feel very well prepared. I think thanks to him too. Uh, of course, uh, Nicholas Piedmont, big thanks to um, uh, AJ Patel. Everybody that's like helped me and talked to me, uh, you know, uh, Angela and Adam Hill they helped me out so much. It's, it's it takes a lot of things to be really good at this sport and it's really hard to do it by yourself you know so even, even now as i'm thanking people there's so many other people who just even just being nice to me and saying hey man keep going you know especially in the situation right now you know where like i'm going into this fight and i had a loss you know too and i'm like oh, man this is this is something that can affect you mentally people being positive towards you and having good good energy towards you goes a long way when you're training at five in the morning, you know what I mean? And going to bed at like midnight, you know, uh, thanks to everybody. If I forgot somebody's name right now, I was mentioning right now, I'm sorry, but thank you so much to everybody that's giving me the energy going into this camp, you know? Nice. And okay. thank you. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day to do this, Dwight. You're awesome. Uh, thanks We're everybody. out, guys. Peace. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.